everyone, my name is McKenna White and I'm one of the student fellows at the Civil War Institute of Gettysburg College. If there's one thing that Gettysburg is almost synonymous with, it's ghosts and ghost stories. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of the earliest ghost stories that appeared here at the Gettysburg battlefield. Now, the first ghost stories actually appeared almost immediately following the conclusion of the battle here at Iverson's Pits. Now on the first day of battle, Iverson's brigade came from over here and rushed across this field meeting Union troops on the top of this hill by the stone wall. And they faced almost total devastation, especially in this dip as you see right behind me. That's why it's known as Iverson's Pits. Um, oh, some claim that because of this total devastation, this is where um, a large number of supernatural ghosts and presences first began appearing just because the carnage at this scene of the battle was so horrific and brutal. Another reason for the spread of these early ghost stories um, directly after the battle is likely due to 19th century religious and spiritual beliefs at the time, um, 19th century individuals were very concerned with death and having a good death, um, and many of the people who died at Iverson's Pits did not have uh, what would be considered a good death by 19th century standards. So that may have also influenced some of these early ghost stories that are appearing here at Iverson's Pits. Now, as I said, some of these ghost tales began appearing two or three days after the conclusion of the battle, and they actually began when farmhands refused to start working in the evening or night shifts because they claimed that they saw ghosts. Now, you may be wondering what kind of ghosts were they seeing, what kind of ghostly apparitions, that sort of thing. They claim that they saw thousands of white handkerchiefs blowing across the field when there was no wind and no one in sight. They also had claims of smoke billowing across the horizon and hearing cannon fire even though there was nothing around. Uh, later on, this wasn't directly after the battle, but a few years after, the reports began coming in about seeing full body specters and have continued to this day where people will come out here in the late evening or at night and claim that they see ghosts. Now, just because the first ghosts appeared here at Iverson's Pits does not mean that they are only um, condensed to this area. As we will see, ghost stories began popping up around other parts of the battle as the years turned into centuries and decades. Now, stories from the Sachs Covered Bridge began appearing a few years after the war, um, about three or four years, um, and mainly stemmed from a singular story um, in which during the battle, three men were charged with desertion and hung in the bridge. Um, and so, many people following the war began reporting ghost sightings um, of seeing three severed heads, um, of seeing the full apparition bodies of the men who were hung, uh, having the smell of cigar smoke in the air, um, and just glowing orbs following them around. Um, and so this was kind of the second epicenter of ghost stories um, that first began popping up around Gettysburg. Now, Devil's Den is a unique site because it combines a mix of old and new ghosts. Um, from the 1930s, um, pretty much onward, people began seeing ghosts and reporting ghost sightings here at Devil's Den. Um, in uh, Harrisburg, um, newspaper.
newspaper article, uh, one man wrote about his experiences with a ghost in which he saw a man in full Civil War Union uniform walking on the side of the road, and he stopped and asked the man um, what he was doing, and the man said that he needed help for his friend. So our traveler went to the nearest uh, town, went into the first building he could find, and he told the local people about this man and his story, and the local people told him that person wasn't real, you just saw a ghost, that happens all the time. Devil's Den is also home to some of the newer ghosts, including the uh, somewhat infamous Hawaiian Shirt Man, uh, which is an apparition of a, a tourist from the 1980s wearing, you guessed it, a Hawaiian shirt. Um, and now these old and new apparitions can be seen here at Devil's Den, have been reported being seen here at Devil's Den since the 1930s. Now, while ghost sightings occasionally popped up in all of these locations throughout the end of the 19th and early 20th century, it was in the 1970s that the ghost tour business in Gettysburg really exploded and increased almost tenfold. And this is because the 1970s was when ghost hunting as a profession and a pastime became increasingly popular. So. As a result of this, in the 1970s, the first ghost tours began popping up around Gettysburg, um, mainly small things, and then when the industry began to grow, these ghost enthusiasts began writing books and blogs commemorating uh, the ghost industry of Gettysburg and perpetuating these ghost stories. Now. Today, Gettysburg has become a magnet for ghost enthusiasts, um, with people participating in local ghost tours, but also ghost hunts, with people who are both professional and amateur groups coming to quote-unquote hunt for these ghosts around Gettysburg in some of these locations, including very popularly Devil's Den. Um, and there are also several videos and photographs of ghost evidence found in which people can see specters, floating orbs, um, and other such evidence of ghosts um, that they have circulated both in their ghost books but also via the internet and you can find no lack of these on streaming services such as YouTube. Now in some ways this boom in ghost enthusiasm and paranormal hunting around Gettysburg has actually really helped because it's inspired more people to visit Gettysburg for their ghost hunting purposes, but along the way they end up learning quite a bit about the history itself, and so in that way it's actually been very helpful for educating people about the true history of Gettysburg and the battle that occurred here. As we can see, ghost stories have been popping up around different parts of the Gettysburg battlefield since the end of the battle itself. Who knows where and when the next ghost story may arise.